Okay, ladies and gentlemen, today we're talking about uh, GoMath 12.3, and we're talking about dot plots and frequency graphs. So now that we're talking about statistics and we're talking about data, the concept that we have to deal with now is how do we organize all of this, right? So we have lots and lots of numbers, we have lots of data points, and we've looked at a couple different pieces that we could start asking ourselves, well, is this a good question, like our statistical questions? How do we make sense of all of this, right? Are we just taking a snapshot? So when I'm looking at something that's a dot plot or a frequency graph, I'm going to represent the number of times something happens, right? So let's say, um, well, let's say the number of 12-year-olds. So number of, and we'll say ages, right? So I have number of ages, and I would put ages down here. And let's say 10, 11, 12, 13. And so let's just look at uh, sixth graders as an example. We may have a few sixth graders who are almost 13 or pretty close to 13. And we may have, I know of at least one that is 10, at least coming into this year, right? So let's say we, we, we span that out and we want to know um, how often this type of thing occurs. So what is the frequency? So frequency. how often something occurs. So let's say we have one 10-year-old. We have nine 11-year-olds, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12-year-olds, 12 and we have three 13-year-olds. So you can see I used Xs for this particular one, and the X, every X represents one student in our class. So we have one student in our class for every one of these Xs. This is really, really handy because all I have to do is look at this and I can say, oh, okay, well, what is the age in our classroom that occurs most often? And easily enough, well, that's 12, certainly. What about the one that occurs least often? We have the least number of 10-year-olds right there, right? Um, these are also very beneficial if I wanted to find the middle number. So for example, I want to say, what is the mean, or I'm sorry, the median, the middle number of our classroom here? I can start and cross off the bottom, the top, 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 until I am right there. There's our median, right? So this is just a quick, easy snapshot so I can see how often something occurs or what is its frequency. So let's go ahead and look in your books, right? Sometimes we will use dots, and sometimes we'll use Xs. It just depends on, on what we're feeling like. Sometimes we can even represent in a frequency table something with um, pictures. So I might say like the amount of people, and I might actually use little stick figures of people, right? That's fine. So draw a number line with the appropriate scale, and the numbers vary from blank to blank, so we're going to use a scale from 0 to 10. So for our case, the numbers in here will vary from 1 to 4. Uh, these are the numbers that we're talking about in your, your book itself. And I didn't grab my book to read this problem for you. But let's say I'm dealing with the frequency of something that happens um, dealing with numbers of 1 to 4, right? Maybe the amount of times that someone sneezes in a day. I don't know. It really doesn't matter what it is. So because they're 1 to 4, I'm going to, oh, distance walking miles. I'm going to make. A graph, a line chart, or a line graph of 0 to 10. Because it's not going to make sense to go 0 to 100 if I'm only dealing with the first four numbers, right? So I want to make something that's kind of appropriate. So I make it like that. And then I, as I go through and I track everybody, and I'm going to go ahead and just grab my book right here so I can read that problem for you. So reading through our problem of 12.3, it goes something like this. Uh, dot plot. So we're talking about dot plots here. Dot plot is a frequency graph, and Hannah is training for a walkathon. The table shows the number of miles she walks each day. She has one day left in her training. How many miles is she most likely to walk on that day? So again, she's training, and we want to know what, which, how many miles she is most likely to walk. So most likely is probably the one that occurs most often. So most days when she goes out walking, what does she walk? 
and that's going to be what we're anticipating her walking the last day. So distance and miles walked. So the first one, she walked one mile, then maybe she walked four miles, then she walked two miles, then she walked two miles, then she walked three miles. So I put a dot for every day that we can calculate here. And then I lay them out in a nice orderly fashion. So now I can see. It doesn't really matter which comes first and which comes last. It's about the value. So I can see how often it occurs. So in this particular case, uh, I have some other numbers that aren't really representing here. So I am going to put out my whole graph right here. Sorry, we'll keep the graph. And we'll say the numbers in your book, this is on page 661. 661. Uh, we have a 4, a 2, a 9, a 3, a 3, a 5, a 5. So I'm going to go through and just add dots according to the data that we have in here, right? So let me mark how big I want. Mm, let's make it a small one. Let's see what that does. Make it small, make it maybe a little bigger. There we go. That's the perfect size right there. All right. So I take for every um, distance that I'm going to walk, I mark a dot. So let's start with 4, 4, a 2, a 9, a 3, a 3. The next line is a 5, a 5, and a 1, a 6, and a 2. And then I have a 5, a 2, a 5, a 4, and a 5. 5, 4, 5. And then I have a 4, a 9, and a 3. A 4, 9, and a 3. A 2, and a 4. 2, and a 4. Okay, so you can see that I've covered up the dots. I don't know if you can see it that well on there, but you can see that I have covered up the dots uh, that were already there with my own dots. Maybe if I made them blue, they would stand out a little bit more. I'll think of that for the next video. And so now I know that some days she walks as many as nine miles. But does she do it often? No, not very often. Um, she doesn't walk one mile either. She's usually good for more than one mile. So the question that I ask is, which is the one that she walks most often? Well, most often, which one occurs the most is five. Because five occurs five times. Two and four are pretty close, but they only occur four times. So what is she most likely to be walking? It's five miles, because that's the one that's the biggest that occurs the most. All right, so let's take a look at one more of these in your book. And let's say Jill. Jill keeps a record of her workout times. Let's go ahead and mark this for Jill here. All right, so Jill keeps a record of her workout times. And I want to list the workout times in the first column. And we're going to see exactly how many workout times she has. So first thing that I could do would be to go through and say, OK, Jill's workout times. She has a frequency of 7 for 30 minutes. Well, one thing that I may want to do is to make myself a frequency graph, right? And it goes from 30, 60, 90 to 120. So I'm going to go ahead and make one. And the only thing I have here is 30, 60, 90, and 120. So 30, 60, 90, and 120. Goes up in increments of a half an hour. OK, so now that we're going up in increments of a half an hour, there's my dots. And I'm going to make those dots blue. How about that? Now they'll be easier to see. There we go. All right, so for each one, what I want to do is, as I mark it, I want to cross it off. Then it just kind of makes sense for me. OK, so I have 30, 60, 30. I'm going to put a dot at 30, 60, 30. So two dots, two goes up, 30, 60, 30. 90, 60, 30. 90, 60, 30. 60, 90, 60. 60, 90, 60. 120, 30, 60. 120, 30, 60. 90, 90, 60. 90, 90, 60. 120, 60, 60. 120, 60, 60. 60, 30, 30. 
60, 30, 30, and 120, 30, 120. So 120, 30, 120, 60, 120, 60, 60, 120, 60, and one last one is 120. Now I know I've accounted for every single one of those, right? So I've accounted for every one of my data points, and in doing so, let's get back to my writing utensil here, I can make myself a little frequency chart here. And this frequency chart just tells me how often, it's a summary of this. Obviously when I look at this, I can see how, what is she most likely to work out, which does she work out most often? 60, 60 occurs all the time, right? 90 is least often, she's not a big fan of an hour and a half. So if I go to 30 minutes and I count them up and I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven dots, and I put seven there. For 60, I count the dots, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, and I would put 11 there. For 90, one, two, three, four, and 120, one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so now I have a nice little table that's gonna tell me how often something is likely to occur, all right? So, working through today, uh, the, the main concept that we have is we wanna take a lot of data and we wanna put it into something that we can measure, right? Something that we can organize and something that's really easy for us to look at and go, oh, I can see that. Every one of your data points becomes its own dot or its own X, and if you wanna summarize them, you can summarize them in a nice frequency table here, but this gives us a really nice snapshot. So, one thing to remember that as you're creating this, Make sure that every time you use a data point, you cross it out. And that way you don't miscount, you don't make a mistake. So take your time and do your best.